Hi, I'm Chris Barthor. Welcome to South Africa. And though we've come on a wing shooting safari, you have to take opportunity to look at the magnificent animals that are available here. And here at Makuzi Falls in Zululand, we're going to do just that. These are the great wing shooting destinations of the world. Steeped in tradition. Offering the pinnacle of shotgun sports. Tour the planet with us. Chris Batha is on a wing shooting adventure he's dreamed about his entire life. I've got to tell you what a beautiful day. The sun's out in Africa. Gunning in the fabled Republic of South Africa. Before the shooting starts, Chris is at Nakuzi Falls, soaking up some quintessential Africa. Wing shooting the world, we've been, been all over Europe, uh, South America, continental America. But here in Africa, Makuzi Falls is one of the most spectacular uh, scenery, uh, wildlife I've ever experienced. Absolutely fantastic. Makuzi Falls is a game preserve located between the world famous Kruger National Park and the Zululand Coast. The motto here is, the same Africa, but a different world. It is one of two game preserves in the region where you have the opportunity to encounter all of Africa's big five. We're invited to South Africa by Bird Hunters Africa and a uh, good friend Mark Haldane invited me down and uh, of course if you come to Africa no safari is complete without a look at the big five and even though we're wing shooting the world uh, I had a fantastic opportunity this morning to go out and uh, view some of these magnificent animals. Uh, I can't describe what it's like to be within 10 feet of a troop of elephants. And right from the big bull elephant through the matriarch down to the, uh, a couple of babies. I mean, you know, you could have reached out and touched them extraordinary. How it works is that a group of you, up to eight, go out in a, a specially um, fabricated Land Rover and uh, you have two guides, Seaple, and he follows tracks and uh, basically uses his guiding skills to, to, to find the animals for you. Once spotted, he tries as best he can to uh, turn the engine off and coast up to them and uh, he done a magnificent job on the elephants. I mean, we were within 10 feet and uh, you have no idea until you get that close to a truly wild troop of elephants just how magnificent they are and in particular the babies, you know, and, and the speed when they decided to move off when they finally got wind of us and, and, and one of the young bulls sort of like alarmed them and they all moved off. You know, these are truly wild. This isn't a zoo. This is a, 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 a 25,000 an acre reserve and uh, these are wild elephants just unbelievable you know get your adrenaline pumping we get a little spoiled here you know you can't believe the luxury of the accommodations and the uh, the lodge but also it carries out to the field and they produce and, and provide the most fantastic alfresco lunches out there usually we get driven up to a high point where you can look down this magnificent valley just incredible and uh, most refreshing a couple of hours early morning five o'clock start and brisk brisk Cold morning, nothing better than a, you know, like a hot chocolate and, and a sandwich finished by some of the best cookies I've ever had. We're 650 meters up on the rolling hills of the uh, African savanna and uh, we're looking at lions, a pride of lions, somewhere between 7 to 11, they're so well camouflaged, it's difficult to spot them all. Um, amazing to see this king of the jungle, the king of beasts, um, just lying there with his pride of females. Uh, there is a young one, um, I can't tell you the, uh, the thrill of seeing them in their real natural habitat. They look like domestic cats and behave just like them, but you can just see the raw power in their shoulders and hips. You know? It's even nerve-wracking to be sitting here so close to them. I can be, what, 20 feet? And uh, 
I should imagine two leaps in the band and I'd be joining the wildebeest they had for lunch this morning. I'm uh, not a safari guy, I'm not a big game hunter, but uh, to see these animals in the wild is truly a unique experience. It's, you know, fantastic, it doesn't do it justice. While the sights and sensations of Makuzi Falls are enough to draw hunters and non-hunters alike to this region of South Africa, Chris Batha is here on a wing shooting adventure. And what awaits him next may be better than any duck shoot he's enjoyed in his lifetime. When Wing Shooting the World with Chris Batha returns. <laughs> I tried to claim them all. <laughs> South Africa is a country of pure beauty. After taking in a couple of days of wild South Africa at Nkuzi Falls Game Preserve, Chris, hunting with Bird Hunters Africa, is in the Zulu Wings Lodge near the town of Dundee. Zulu Wings is the main lodge for Bird Hunters Africa. This is it, guys. The ducks aren't there yet, but when they do, it's going to be awesome is justly located at the heart of some of the best wing shooting cover the country has to offer. Hope for a lot of ammunition, Jack. I'm looking forward to this. Pigeon, guinea fowl, doves, they're all here. But today, today is all about ducks. With the wind like it is today, the ducks are going to be coming from down this side. As you can see, this little flock coming in, coming in here. Coming in now, yeah. Like these, yeah. These eight. That's it. Two, four, six. So you can count faster. I tell you what, eh? they're going to come in like this here. They they're going to drop oh, in. Oh, we can't take them as passing shots over the blinds like you that. You can do whatever makes you happy. All right. The yeah. only thing you cannot do is shoot them when their toes are touching the water. Chris is hunting with guide Mark Haldine of Bird Hunters Africa in one blind with good friends Jack and Sue Bishop nearby. Mark, to no end, brags about the amazing duck shoots near Zulu Wing. Let's just say he's a man of his word. Yeah, we're in the Dundee area. It's a predominantly a corn growing area with some beef cattle. The ducks and uh, geese do very well in this area. They like all these little ponds. We've got some big ponds where they roost on and these little ponds where they come up to feed. Just behind us up here is a big corn field that has a center pivot on. Perfect area for ducks. We're gonna have some good fast action this afternoon and I hope the guns can shoot straight. Okay, and then your other duck. What we're looking for is the uh, yellow billed duck, uh, the red billed teal, and the white faced whistling duck. And um, they're already coming in behind me, and I can't wait to get into that blind and meet you to get stuck into them. This is going to be exciting shooting, and uh, another three species of duck that I've never had the opportunity to shoot, and therefore. Um, I hope to be challenging. Good wind today, so they're going to be flaring and jinking. And they're not going to be easy shots, but I'm going to give it my best try. Take it when you're ready. Got it. There he goes. Made it! Okay guys, that is a red bull teal. It's our fastest waterfowl. And as you can see, they come in like the clappers. That is a beautiful duck. Really, really pretty. That was a shot. Nice shooting. Nice shooting. Well, I'm going to claim it. <laughs> I thought you told me you weren't coming into the lake. You know, we've been here two minutes. We must have had ten shots already. Well, because with the flat cover and the moon, it's kind of a dark day today. So they're definitely going to fly early. Good thing we got you early. Yes. Yeah. Took away your lunchtime nap today. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'd give up my lunchtime nap any time to shoot ducks like this. This okay, is yeah. just superb. Yeah, we can shoot legally in South Africa till 30 minutes after sunset, which brings us to just before 6 p.m. Very often at 20 before 6, we haven't had a single bird in. But tonight we've got a, a, a 
two positive points. One, we've got a lot of cloud cover. And the second thing, we have no moon. So the ducks will fly earlier. I don't know if you've picked any up behind me, but they're coming in thick and fast already. I think they're the same thing, they're turning just as the... There's a pellet in that one, it'll go down. You got that first one, Jack. These ducks are moving, there's a quite a brisk wind today, and these are a fast flying duck. I, I, I'm, this is tough shooting. I mean, this isn't mallards dropping in, flaring their wings and just hanging there for the gun. These are really fast ducks, and if they take one look at you, they just turn and jink on the wing, and I mean we're in serious trouble. You know, I've got to get my act together here. You will, you will find, Chris, as it gets later, they'll drop them yeah. lower and yeah. lower as it gets later. You have to take it as they come over the wall. Take it, take it! What do you guys want them to fly down the front end of your... Chris Batha is in South Africa on a wing shooting adventure of a lifetime. He's sharing a blind with Mark Haldine of Bird Hunters Africa and hunting with Jack and Sue Bishop. It's a long journey to get here, hours spent on an airplane and more on the road traveling to your destination. But to get a duck shoot like this near the town of Dundee, well, all the travel woes are quickly forgotten. There he goes, made it! This is a trip every wing shooter should make. It's a lot of fun. I'm working with Mark Haldane himself today. He's uh, calling the ducks for us and directing the, uh, the shooting, which is really helpful, because these are a species I haven't ah, shot before. Ah, ah, I have different ah, behavior ah, patterns. Ah, ah, ah. In the next blind along is my good friends, uh, Jack and Sue Bishop. And uh, once I'm again, great you. to be sharing these experiences Coming with uh, long life friends. Take him, take him, guys, take him! Nice shooting. Those are both yours. This is take just uh, some of the best duck shooting I've ever taken part of in the world. I mean, uh, we're shooting such a variety of ducks. They're fast, we've got a good breeze. Um, Mark's doing a superb job of, of calling them in. You know, some, we should be going to the World Duck Calling Championships so and we're pulling them in. You can see them come from so far off as they float in and glide in. But they're wary. These are truly wild ducks. And as they're flaring and jinking, I mean, there's some great shooting going on. Jack, I tell you what, I'm going to give you the duck call and you give me your shotgun. What do you reckon? Oh, no, you keep the duck call, I'll keep the gun. We need to eat this evening. <laughs> We've had a lot of ducks in that come in um, with nasty gaps in between so it hasn't just been furious but it's been good and steady all afternoon and that's purely because of the weather the heavy cloud cover we've got and you know the guys have done well they've shot well some have beat them some haven't and that's the way it should be if, if you look at the twelves are at you have to take his as they come over the wall take him take him oh it's been wonderful I, I not shot ducks like this before. These are hard ducks to hit because they come in and then they just kind of zoom off and, and they flare and I'm looking at one because I'm supposed to take the one on the right because Jack is supposed to take toward the middle and Chris at the end and the left and they cross so I'm always trying to figure out which one I'm supposed to shoot and it makes it twice as hard but I'm having a good time. I got it. <laughs> it's down. It's down. Very well shot, Sue. Well, the day has been excellent. It's been steady. It's been fun. It's really fun getting a piece of Chris. He's having a little trouble. He's on an off day. And uh, that makes it a lot more fun when you can drop birds in front of the instructor. Hey, guys, here comes some spooming geese. Come on, pass, come on, pass. Where it's going? I hit that one twice. The biggest goose in the world, taken by a number four. Well done, guys. That other one's going to go bad. That is incredible. And that's the biggest goose in Africa? The biggest goose in the world. 
the biggest goose in the yeah. world. So I hate to disappoint you guys, but this is quite a small one. Right. Come on, of course. The, the, that's a young gander. And you see the name Spurring Goose comes from the carpal spurs that he has on his wings here. Guys, there's another flight of ducks coming. <laughs> Take him whenever you're ready. What are you guys trying to save on cartridges shooting two with one shot? <laughs> <laughs> Take him whenever you're ready. Ready. Oh. This is why wing shooters travel halfway across the globe to South Africa. Take it. Chris Batha is in the midst of one of the finest duck shoots to which he has ever been party. <laughs> we spring we spring to object duck. But guys, those those ducks came in real high. I thought they were gonna do a circle and then they just dropped just dropped straight in. Chris is sharing blinds with longtime friends Jack and Sue Bishop. Good friends who all enjoy the spice of competition in their wing shoot. <laughs> They come, here they come, coming in low. Nice! So that was a great shot. I, mine was absolutely a give me and I missed it with both barrels, but yeah, it was a clean kill. You wiped my eye. Well, Chris, somebody has to hit him, so I guess if you're gonna miss him, I'll have to take over. <laughs> <laughs> You're really building my confidence. <laughs> the three primary species we shoot here are the yellow bull duck, the white-faced whistling duck, and the red bull teal. The red bull teal and the yellow bull duck decoy very well, and they appeal to the American sportsmen because they, they are accustomed to shooting decoyed birds. In fact, they do a, a splendid job of it. Um, our, our, our ducks don't work well in the morning, but they move a lot in the evenings to small ponds, in the vicinity of cornfields and that sort of stuff and uh, you'll find that just before dark we get a good flight 50 to 100 ducks all coming into a little pond sometimes it's spread out on a cloudy day over a longer period but on a on a clear bluebird day just before dark they just come in to beat the band and sometimes the action gets fast and furious and if you see that that one you've got there that's a hen and this one that Dustin brought that's the drake. You see how much bigger his head is? He's a little bit, little bit more of a sort of a, a upright building. When you see mallards, though, and you see the hen and the male, the, the male, you know, as nature is, is usually far more colourful. Yeah, absolutely they're no absolutely difference. They're absolutely identical, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely identical in every other way. Just, 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 just the size of the just head. The head. Just the head. Well, they're pretty enough to get some more. We just scared them off. Four <laughs> ducks right over us. Jack, you mean to be watching the ducks for us? With the sun setting, one would think the action would slow. Not here. Take it. Hang on, you ready? That one's died. He'll go down in a second. Well, it's 5.30, and normally this is the time that all hell breaks loose. Yeah, coming up, hop it, up, 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 up. Shot! What a fantastic shot! Yeah! They came in early and I figured we had 150 to 175 by 5.30. I honestly thought it was all over with, but they didn't disappoint us. 10 minutes before it got too dark to see the end of your barrel, they just came in like someone had opened the pen. I mean, they just flew to beat the band. And everyone did well and uh, we stopped probably two minutes before the end of legal shooting time. And I'd say we got 50, 60 ducks in the bag. 
Well done, anyway. Good shoot. You know when, uh, like an outfitter or a PA, he builds up a, a finale, you know, he tells you about this wonderful twilight shoot and how the ducks have come in in a great rush and, you know, they'll be dropping and plopping in around you and, you know, they build it up to the point where you think it's got to be an anti-climax. Well, I tell you, that surpassed anything he described. Unbelievable. Uh, just fantastic shooting. An eyesight test, yes. Gun ability test, but just like, the, you know, just the ultimate of... Uh, a, a decoy duck shoot. I can't describe the adrenaline rush there in that last five, ten minutes as the sun just dipped over the horizon in Africa. After the shoot, and after a great dinner at Zulu Wings Lodge, Chris and his group of guns are in line for a real treat. We um, had a fabulous duck shoot, came back, had a wonderful supper, and then all of a sudden there was a commotion and noise and singing outside, and Mark said he had arranged something special for us. Well, it was special. We came out, and there was some uh, young children, young Zulu children, I don't know, around 10 or 12 of age, and um, they had the uh, traditional drums with them, and they'd done one of their Zulu dances for us, which was um, a, a sort of like a commemoration of a, a previous historical war battle. And I've got to tell you, that was spectacular. And uh, if anything made this trip worthwhile, it was that. Every single bird we shoot, we pick up, or we make a concerted effort to pick up. We certainly lose a couple here or there. And every single bird that we don't personally use or our staff use is distributed either to the, to the farmers, laborers, and everyone knows the program. When the white land cruiser drives up, the children line up immediately and by the, the smiles on their face and the singing, you know it's well appreciated.